Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer, I thought in this lesson we would take a look at a technique that every editor says, well, pretty much most editors for that matter, say cannot be done inside of your nonlinear editing application, and that is transfer modes, or as they're more commonly referred to as blending modes. Now, believe it or not, this technique, like I said, editors say can't be done, actually can be done. You can't do it with standard tools inside a Media Composer or Symphony, but with tools that you do have at your disposal that you might not realize you do, you can do this very quick and very simple right from within the comfort of your Media Composer timeline. Okay, so before we get started into Media Composer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look at the two clips that we're going to be working with. Both of them are from Ramp and Design Tools, and this first one is a flash effect here. There we go. Very cool, which can easily be used as a transition, and I'm going to show you how we're going to use it as a transition once we get into Media Composer. And next I have just a sort of a standard, uh, well, I wouldn't call it necessarily standard, but a dust effect. Very nice. And I'm going to show you not only how we can put this over top of footage, but how we can actually enhance this to make it stand out even more than it does right now. Okay. Now, what we're going to do to get these elements into Media Composer is we're going to use AMA Link to. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is because if I take a look at the Movie Inspector here, you'll see this dust effect element is 24 frames per second, whereas this element here, the rampant flash effect, let's just open it again with QuickTime here, we'll just come back to our Movie Inspector, is actually 29.97 frames per second. Now, the reason I'm going to use AMA Link to is because by linking to the clips, they're going to keep their native frame rate. I don't need to worry about creating different projects with different frame rates to get this footage in. Okay, so let's just close everything up and now let us Alt tab on Windows or Command tab into Avid's Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt and tab into Avid's Media Composer or obviously Command and tab for all my Mac friends out there. Now I am using version 7 of Media Composer, but anyone using version 6, the techniques I'm going to show you work exactly the same in both applications. Now you'll remember in the intro that I basically said that this technique that I'm showing you can be done, it just can't be done with the standard tools inside a Media Composer or Symphony. So what exactly did I mean by that? Well, when you made your Media Composer or Symphony purchase, you have access to two different applications. For Media Composer editors, you actually only have access to one, and that is Avid Effects. Now for Symphony editors or uh, Media Composer editors with Symphony Option for version 7, you actually have access to two different tools that you can do this technique with, which I'm going to show you both ways. The first is obviously Avid Effects, much like Media Composer editors, and the second one is Boris Continuum Complete 8. Now both come standard when you buy Media Composer or Symphony or Media Composer or Media Composer with Symphony Option, so you have this at your disposal. So if you haven't downloaded it and installed it, I suggest you do. Why? Because it's free. And second of all, it's going to give you access to these very cool effects. Very quick and very simple. Okay, so the first thing that I need is some footage to work with. So let's just import our footage here. I'm just going to call this AMA Linked to Elements. And let's just come in here. Let's actually make sure my L here is lowercase here. There we go. Very nice. And what I'm going to do is just come right down here. I'm going to right click. We're going to say AMA Link. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to the desktop into our Transfer Modes folder. I'm just going to select both elements here and simply say Open. You'll see here they are now inside of Media Composer. Very cool. And here's our Dust element. There we go. Very nice. Now let's do that transition that I was talking about in the introduction. So the first thing that I'm going to need, obviously I guess the second thing I'm going to need, is some clips to work with. Now I think I'm going to go with my motocross footage here. So let's come down to my stock footage. We're just going to choose motocross from Digital Juices Video Tracks HD. And let's see, I've got a clip marked here. This one's kind of cool. That's sort of the perfect place to put a transition right there. So why don't we just use that? And I'm simply going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. And let's just create a new bin that's going to be obviously called Sequences. There we go. Uh, apparently that's already in use. Oh, I do already have a Sequences bin here. So let's just see here. Let's go to Sequences. I'll just stick this in there. Just close this bin. Don't need it anymore. We'll just delete it. There we go. And we'll just call this Transfer Modes. Okay, now most people think that uh, with elements like this that they should come with alpha channels. 
Now the only problem with alpha channels inside of Avid's Media Composer, or Symphony for that matter, is that uh, the, neither application, or I guess now Media Composer, or Media Composer with Symphony Option, supports pre-multiplied alphas. So in most cases, mat keying, uh, bringing in the mat element separately is pretty much the way that you want to go. Uh, but with elements like this, getting in and doing transfer modes is great because you don't need any keying information. Now let me just take another clip here and just drop it into the timeline. Let's just actually find one where something seems to be going on here. This one's not even too bad here. We'll just sort of take that right there. We're going to have them sort of coming up over the hump just like that. Very cool. Just drop this in, be on the keyboard again on both Mac and Windows. And we're going to want that transition, that flash effects transition, to happen over top of these two shots to transfer from one to the other. So what I need to do is I need to find a place where it's pretty much all white. And even that's not too bad right there. So what I'm going to do is mark that as my endpoint. We're just going to come down to about there, mark that as my out point, and let's create a new video layer. Very simple. Control and Y in Windows, Command and Y on the Mac, and let's just deselect all my channels so we auto patch to V2 here. Just mark an endpoint. We're going to drop that in. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, I'm going to go into trim mode and just trim this back to the beginning of the clip, just like such. So now you'll see that we've got that transition working. And we can pretty much put the transition wherever we want. I just sort of put it at the brighter part towards the end there. So now how do we get in and actually apply this effect? Well, it's actually very easy. Let's do it for all of you Media Composer editors out there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. We're going to come up to the Avid Effects category because we're assuming that you already have it installed. And I'm going to choose the Avid Effects filter here. I'm simply going to take it, drag and drop it right down here onto my shot. And we're going to step into Effects Mode. My, my shortcut for Effects Mode, I know you all know it, so sing it along with me, is Shift and Y on the keyboard. If you don't have it mapped, no problem. You can always find it right over here. What we're going to do is we're going to launch the Avid Effects user interface. Now, what I should actually do first is just cancel out of this, because you're going to notice right away that I actually have two video layers in my timeline. I have what's considered to be the main layer that the effect is applied to. And the way Avid Effects works is that the layer that the effect is applied to is considered layer one. And all the subsequent layers below it are considered two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, et cetera. So what's going to happen is when we go into Avid Effects, this layer, like I said, that the effect is applied to is going to be layer one, and this layer below it is going to be layer two. So what I'm going to do is just simply launch the user interface, and you'll see there's video layer one that the effect is applied to, and right below it is my footage in my Media Composer timeline. Now to get access to the transfer modes is actually very simple. All I'm going to do is turn that element back on. Let's just come to a point right about there where we're actually able to see what's going on and what's going to be transparent here. And what we're going to do is just navigate right up to the top to controls. I'm going to click on composite. I'm going to come to the apply mode and I'm simply going to switch it from normal to add. And you'll see as soon as I do that, what we now have is we now have this fantastic transfer mode working pretty much the way that we want. Look at that. Now all I have to do is simply say apply. It's going to be applied to my Media Composer timeline. I'm going to give this a quick render. And guess what? If I come back now and I hit play, we now have a transition between these two clips. Very nice. Now what I want to do is I want to save this uh, additive blend mode. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new bin. And we're going to call this uh, blend modes. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this element, just make sure we step into effects mode here, and all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take the effect and I'm going to drag it into the bin just like that. And we're going to call this add blend mode. Okay? And we'll just close this up. And I'm just going to keep it here. What I should actually do is call it Avid Effects add blend mode because there is another way that we can do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the effect by simply hitting F5 on the keyboard just like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit, again, Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. And this one is for all you Symphony editors out there. Now, Symphony editors obviously have two options. One, you could do the Avid Effects method, which we're not going to do. Why? Well, because we have access to Boris Continuum Complete 8. All I'm going to do is I'm simply going to come down to uh, Keys and Blend right here. And we're going to choose Composite. Now, the beauty of this effect is that it's real time. Now, you're going to want to make sure that you're using the most recent version of Boris Continuum Complete 8, which I believe is 8.3. Uh, free upgrade, you've already you know, got uh, BCC8, so you get all the free upgrades with it. And what we're going to do is simply take the effect, drag it and drop it onto our shot. 
Now you'll see that it's already doing something as far as the blend mode goes because it has a default. And what we're going to do is we're just going to step into effects mode, shift and Y here. So actually make sure that I'm pressing shift and Y. There we go. And you'll see right over here, it's actually a hard light mode. So we're just going to switch that from hard light to add. And what we now have in real time, if we play this, is our transition looking very, very sharp. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this again. I'm going to drag it out and we're going to call this BCC8 add blend mode. Now, why did I do that? Well, it's actually very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add another shot in here right about there. And let's just grab, it doesn't even matter which one. Sure, why not this one here? And what we're going to do is we're just going to come down just like that. I'm going to take it, drop it in because I want to do the exact same transition here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this element. I'm just going to match frame it here. And we're going to, and let's actually make sure we drop that clip on the right video track here. We'll just drag it down like such. Very nice. We're going to edit this in video layer two. Again, trim mode, just to trim it back to the beginning, just like such. And now instead of going back up to the, uh, you know, effects palette, taking the effect, dragging it on, going into effects mode, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because I've saved out these two effects, if I'm using Media Composer, all I need to do is grab Avid Effects, grab it, drag it, drop it, render it like such. And in a couple seconds here, I'm going to have my transition all set to go, just like this. Or if I happen to be working in Symphony with Avid or with Boris Continuum Complete 8, all I have to do is simply take this blend mode, drag and drop it like such, don't need to render anything, it's real time. And there we go. Very, very cool. Now it's also important to keep in mind is that you can use transfer modes to do subtle changes to things. Like, let's take our dust effects here. What I'm going to do is just simply right click and say new sequence and we'll drop the sequence of course into the sequences bin. And I'm going to take the rampant dust effects element here. I'm just going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. And we're just going to drop this into again a new timeline. Very cool. And I'm going to put a title over top of this. So Control and Y and Windows, Command and Y on the Mac to create a new video layer. Let's come up to our new title command. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a 3D title inside a marquee. Why not? Let's have some fun here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call this, of course, Creative Cow Rocks with, of course, a bunch of exclamation marks. And the font that I'm going to use is Impact because Impact, nothing says nice and bold and in your face like Impact here. And let's center our text up. And let me just turn my safes on here. We'll just line everything up. And I'm going to make this text fairly big. So we're just going to increase its size just like that. And what I'm also going to do here is just select all the text, Control and A, Command and A for all my uh, Mac friends. And I'm going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows. And we're just going to use the up arrow key to adjust the letting here. There we go. And let's just position this title just about in the middle like such. I'm going to come down to the Effects tab right here, and we're going to extrude our element. And what's important to keep in mind is that we obviously need a light before we can do anything. So with the light, you'll see it's right here. But what's important to keep in mind is that I need to actually turn the lighting on on our element here, on our text. So I'm just going to enable lighting, and there we go. Now I can basically take my light and reposition it wherever I want. Now I think what I'm going to do here it's, you know what, we could even just leave it just like that. I think I'm actually pretty happy with the way that this looks. If I wanted to, I could get in, you know, I could add some textures, things like brush metal if I wanted to. Let's actually select our element here. And let's just choose brush metal. There we go. Ah, you know what, I think I'm pretty happy with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this out. We're going to say save to bin. We'll just call this CC Rocks, just like such. We'll say OK. And I'm just going to stick this into, I'll just stick it into the blend modes bin for right now, which is fine. So there we go. There's our title. Let's just make sure we're looking at the best resolution of it here. There we go. Very nice. And I'm just going to hit T on the keyboard and we're just going to edit this in over top of our background element. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new video layer by simply hitting Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. Let's take our dust effects element. I'm going to copy to the clipboard. Uh, Alt and C on the Windows, Option and C on the Mac. Let's just drop it right in on top. Now again, we're going to use the exact same blend mode. We'll just assume for argument's sake that I'm using uh, Media Composer with the Symphony option. I'll just take it, drag and drop it. And take a look now. Now our dust element flies in over top of the Creative Cow text and actually makes it look like 
the creative cow text is sitting there. Now, of course, it's not playing back in real time because I'm AMA linked to, I'm trying to play back basically three streams of uh, effects here. So what I'm going to do is I'll just give this a quick render. And you'll see the render is very quick. I don't even need to render out the whole element here. I can just render out part of it just so you get an idea of how this is going to look. And what I'll do is I'll just stop this here. And we'll just keep what we've got so far. And you can see right here what we've actually got so far. Right where it gets to red is where it's not going to play back in real time. But take a look at that. That looks awesome. It actually looks like the text is now sitting inside of this dust flying around. And if we wanted to get in and sort of bump it up you know, even more, we can just simply create a new layer. Again, T on the keyboard to select the clip. Alt C or Option C to copy it over here. But what's important to keep in mind is that we've copied it with that blend mode. We're simply going to edit it back in. And you can see now what it was and what it is now. We just keep adding to make that uh, just the actual dust itself get even brighter. And what we'll do now is we'll just give this a render here. Now again, remember, this is HD. Now this is 720p, 23976, but take a look at how fast this is rendering. This is one, two, three effects, because what's important to keep in mind is that uh, FrameFlex is actually taking our background element and shrinking it down to be uh, 720p, and then we've got our title and two effects on top of that. And I think we'll just stop it right there, so you get an idea of how this is going to play back. There we go. We'll just keep what we got, come back, simply hit play, and take a look at how awesome that looks. So I hope this tutorial has shown you that getting in and using transfer modes or blend modes inside of Avid's Media Composer Symphony is actually very easy. You have the tools at your disposal. I hope you just actually downloaded them when you made your Media Composer or Symphony purchase. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at Gmail. Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.